Hello everyone, No Numberman here, and today we are going to take a look at Java for C Sharp developers. Yes, so this will not be an actual tutorial on Java, but more an exposition of the differences between C Sharp and Java and how you can transition from one to the other. So as you can see here, we are not actually in Visual Studio, but we are in Eclipse. That's just another IDE. It is specifically made for Java and I like using it. Now, of course, you can still use Visual Studio and you can also use other IDEs like IntelliJ IDEA, for example. But for this video, I will be using Eclipse. All right, let's just start off with creating a new project. We need to create a Java project, of course, and we can call it something like C Sharp to Java. Then we can just finish up here. Uh, module name, I do not want to create a module. Modules are basically just a new form of abstraction. Don't worry about it. You don't need it. Not for a small project at least. Okay, let's uh, get started. And first of all, create a package. That is required. Packages are basically just like subfolders of a project. It will help you organize your code. And it is very much encouraged within Java to do that. Okay, so let's create a package that we will just call tutorial, right? Doesn't really matter what we call it. And then we will create our first class. This will be our entry point. So we can call it just program, similar to C Sharp. Of course, you can call it whatever you like. And then we can also create our entry point here. Public static void main with a string array of arcs. Now that is very similar to how C Sharp works, of course. Here we have our entry point and we can basically do whatever we want in here. I should also mention that Java, just like C Sharp, has its own virtual machine and its own garbage collector, which means that you don't have to worry about the lifetime of your objects. You can just create objects wherever you want and the garbage collector will make sure that they get deleted whenever they need to be deleted. So in that regard, they are very similar. The only real differences is that there is no namespace and instead, we just have this package here, package tutorial. That basically is what your namespace has turned into. Everything that you put in package tutorial shares the same namespace. So I can create another class and there I can just access program without any problems. If I create another package with another name, then I first have to import the tutorial package, which is basically the same as using tutorial package. And then I can use everything inside. So let's do that real quick. Let's create a new package. We will call this example. Then in here, we will put another class called handy class. In the handy class, we will put a little method, something like public static void. And we can just make a hello world method. And in hello world, of course, we can just write hello world. How do we do that in here? Do we have a console? Well, kind of. We have system.out and then we can just print line. So it's basically like a console. Here we go. But instead of it being called console, it's called system.out. Okay. And in here, of course, we can just write hello world. There we go. Then as promised in program, we can just do something like any class hello world. I can actually access it, but as you can see, it will automatically import example.handyclass. If I don't do this, then we will get an issue here, right? And then I have to import it anyway. There we go. And now, as promised, if we make another class here in the tutorial package, which supposedly is similar to a namespace, we can call this another class, this time with capital letters. We can just put our hello world function in here doesn't really matter, right? And then in program, I can do another class dot hello world. And here you can see that we can just call another class dot hello world without actually having to import it. So very, very similar to namespaces. Right, for the rest, everything is very, very similar. You have your integers, you have your booleans, but instead of it being called bool, it's being called boolean actually the full on word. So it's a little bit more bulky, but it should be okay. And you, of course, have your bytes, you have your chars, you have your, what else? Your floats, your doubles, your shorts. Everything is here, right? Everything is the same. 
Now one difference that does exist is the following. Let's say I have one constant value that I just want to define in my class. Something like public static final int a equals 5. Right? This totally works. And as you might guess, final just means const in this context. And actually final is basically just exactly the same as const in C sharp. Now you might notice that const does also exist in Java, but it doesn't do anything. It is a reserved keyword actually. So it doesn't do anything, but you cannot use it for anything that you want to use it for, unfortunately. So yeah, and then I think we have actually already covered all the syntactical differences between C Sharp and Java. So right now you're basically ready to go. There are just a couple other differences. One notable difference here is of course the standard library. So of course we have stuff like lists, list, list equals new array list. And then it will tell us here that we can import list from java.util and we can import array list from java.util. So you can see that these imports or usings at the top of the file here aren't quite system.collections. They are of course a little bit different. So you can actually check everything out by doing import java. and then you get all of these standard library packages with all of these functions.io and then we can check it in here. What do we have in here? Annotation, constant, invoke. Oh, that sounds interesting. And uh, well, we can get uh, the method type, of course. Now we have imported that. Of course, there are hundreds, if not thousands, standard library classes here. So feel free to do some research into that, into everything that you have available. Of course, it is way too much for me to cover. But yeah, it's there and it's free for you to use. You will also notice that this will actually give me a warning. And that is because I am not supplying any type arguments. Because of course, generics are a thing. So let's add those. And then you might notice that int and int here, like we would do in C sharp, doesn't really work. And that is because, well, integers are value types and mm, that doesn't really fit into a list. Instead, we have to use the integer reference type here instead. So let's do that here as well, integer. And then it works, of course, we can then do list.add and then we can just add a, well, five. Of course, it's not exactly ideal to have to box and unbox our integers all the time. But yes, we do kind of need these value based value type integers for our lists, our maps, our dictionaries and whatever. And that brings me to another little issue. Java doesn't really have structs. And that means that you won't be able to define your own value types. Everything in Java is a class, well, of course you have interfaces and you have enums, but enums are basically just integers and interfaces can only be used together with an actual class. So in Java, everything is just a class. And that means that everything or well, almost everything in Java is actually a reference type. Of course you have the built in value types like integers, booleans, but well, you can't even put those in a list. You also have to box them to put them in lists. So it is very, very limited. And there are some other limitations Java has as well. For example, you can't use operator overloading. So I can say, well, my own custom handy class should have its own custom plus operator or its own custom index operator. And I suppose I should also mention that Java does not have any direct pointers or references, something that you can actually do with C sharp. If you use some unsafe code, you can manipulate pointers. You can manipulate data directly just like in C++, which gives you more control, but will give you also more opportunity to make huge mistakes and create memory leaks and all of that good stuff, which in Java, you then will not have to worry about. And I think that already brings us to the final verdict here. So what are actually the differences between Java and C Sharp? Well, if you are coming from C Sharp and you go to Java, you won't be having a very hard time. The syntax is almost exactly the same. Namespaces have been changed into packages, usings have been changed into imports, and consts have been changed into finals. But that is basically it. 
And in more general terms, well, everything is still very similar. Yes, you can't use value types very often, and you can't even make your own value types, but do you really need those? Most of the time you don't use them anyway, and even if you do use them, you don't really have to use them, because your program is so fast anyways that it really doesn't matter. And the same thing with operator overloading. Yes, it is nice to have, but there is nothing that a quick little method, something like add or subtract or get, cannot fix here. So the way I look at it, Java is basically just a more simple version of C Sharp. C Sharp gives you way more control, but it also comes at a cost. C Sharp is very much more difficult to learn. It's very much more easy to make mistakes, whereas Java is quite simple, it's quite basic, and it gets done what it needs to get done. And that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you've learned something and I hope you will enjoy your Java journey. And then I hope to see you all later. Have a good one, everyone. Bye-bye.